Welcome to Science in Your Shopping Cart, a new series that shows how science touches many of the products you buy at the grocery store, from new varieties of fruits and vegetables to technological advances that make your food safer, cheaper, and tastier. I'm Todd Silver. There are over 2 million farms in the United States, many still owned by small family farmers. The environmental impact of all these farms is enormous. These farms produce millions of tons of waste per year, called biomass. Some of this is recycled back into the ground or used as cover to protect crops in the winter. However, ARS scientists are also researching ways to turn biomass into environmentally friendly products. For this episode, we're not going to start in the field or orchard or even a lab, but rather we're going to start in a distribution warehouse. You see, workers here are using these wood pallets to help transport heavy materials. These pallets have to be firm, but also flexible, and they have to handle hundreds, if not thousands of pounds without being crushed. ARS researchers in Albany, California, have created pallets out of biomass, specifically discarded low-value almond and walnut shells. Um, amazing material. This is the torrefied material. You blend it with traditional plastics, and torrefied means it's heated uh, without oxygen. So okay. instead of burning, it just chars, chars and turns black. And then it makes it more hydrophobic, which is good for plastics. So now you can blend it with plastics and it'll kind of bind and uh, form a nice composite. These are test samples, but this is actually... Dr. Gregory Glenn is a plant physiologist with ARS's Bioproducts Research Lab in Albany, California. He works with research leader Dr. William Ortz on developing environmentally friendly products that can replace non-biodegradable plastics. Their pallet invention is already being used by warehouses in California, with more orders coming in. Plastics are a wonder at what you can do with them and how easy they process. That's why they're, they're used everywhere. There's so much you can do with plastics and they're cheap. The problem comes at the end of the plastic item's life. Some can be recycled, but many are discarded and end up in our landfills and oceans. The scientists here in Albany are creating biodegradable and recycled plastics made from discarded agricultural materials, like these pallets comprised of discarded almond shells. The key to producing bioplastics is in the machinery. Here at the lab, researchers created a torrified heating machine that looks more like a life-size mousetrap game. There's a large yellow bucket where the raw material is dumped into, and then a rectangular heating unit, followed by steel rods attached to a compression gauge. Better yet, let me let the experts walk you through it. Charcoal plus post-consumer recycle plastic comes together in the extruder, comes out as a tube, but then you chop it into pieces and becomes a resin. Then we give that resin to the pallet maker. The whole idea here is you take those pellets, the pellets go in here, this is like a big glue gun. It heats and it pushes it out and it comes up. This is all heated. It comes up here. You can kind of see some of the plastic right there. It comes up in, as a uh, ring and then you blow air into it, so like a balloon, and it expands. So now you've got a tube of film coming up and it gets contracted in between these and a roller grabs it. By this time, it's, it's uh, cooled off, but when you roll it, it's not going to stick together. When you start rolling it, it's just like a big piece of plastic. And this piece of equipment is really important in the plastics industry for making all of your bags into products. ARS researchers and their partners are diverting thousands of tons of plastics from landfills to make pallets that are stronger, sturdier, and more flexible than wood pallets. So, not only do these new pallets reduce the amount of plastics in our landfills, but they provide an environmentally friendly use for low-value shells. Adding value to agricultural products helps the rural economy, helps the farmer. Most of the things we do will lower greenhouse gas emissions. So, degradable, compostable products end up helping the environment. So, what we try to do when we're imagining a product is imagine the end of its life. So, it has a use, and then it has an end of life that we predict 
that prevents it from going to landfill. Their bio lab looks like an island of misfit toys, where all these discarded agricultural materials get a second life, benefiting consumers and the environment. Here, they're developing planet-friendly drinking straws, renewable plates and cups, concrete materials made with wheat starch, and even a fiber-based replacement for styrofoam. This insulates as well as styrofoam. We think this is going to be one of the answers to uh, replace styrofoam in certain applications. Those markets are really opening up and we need to have an answer for single-use containers. And still today, if you look at uh, restaurants, uh, the styrofoam takeout container is still used everywhere. Those are markets that we want to get into and uh, we think that if we can, that will really make a difference as far as uh, sustainable packaging, filling up our landfills, all of that uh, will be reduced if we develop this, these technologies. This whole idea of uh, single-use disposable products that can be composted, I think that's the future. Dr. Orts and Dr. Glenn have big picture plans where end-of-life materials are no longer tossed into landfills. Rather, they are either recycled or composted. In the future, Every item you place in your shopping cart will be packaged with the environment in mind.